and welcome to Full Time. I'm Melissa Palmer. And I'm Toby Mott. In today's episode, we have a varsity special along with a QA with Jamie Roberts and George North, and also lots of varsity features. So, Toby, you're looking forward to varsity? Yeah, I am. I wasn't too big on it a few really? weeks ago, um, but then everyone started talking about it, and um, me and a few of my course mates went down to the box office, got a ticket. Um, got a t-shirt, so we'll be in the Millennium Stadium cheering on the rest. <laughs> can't wait, yeah, I'm mean, exactly you? the same, yeah, I can't wait, lots of us are going down. We've got the last slash as well, so yes. lots of celebrations, and along with the rugby, we also have all the leading up events, so UTV will be covering the training, along with all the other matches we've got on. So, next up, we have Cardiff Rowan training in preparation for varsity. Next up, we have a Q&A session with Jamie Roberts and George North that took place in Solus last Tuesday evening. Take a look. The test in Sydney, we did everything right. So we about to deliver in about 80 minutes. Something we didn't quite do on Sunday, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, go, we'll skip over that. Yeah, we'll skip over that. We won't say too much about it. Uh, but Gavin, he didn't say too much. I mean, this is speech for Sean Sharp. It was pretty to the point. He said, "Look, you know, you guys have chance to make history. Don't you know, no regrets or anything. Just go and give it everything." I I saw a natural break in my life when I graduated from Cardiff. I, did, I signed a four-year contract with Cardiff. I did my last two years of medicine over four years part time, and I kind of had this four-year plan. And I knew once I'd finished, I wasn't going to work as a doctor or some still playing rugby. I was always going to pick it up after I finish. And, um, it was just a natural point in my life where I thought, right, I've got, I've got to spread the fly the next year. Because I've, I grew up in Cardiff, I've lived my whole life here. And, um, it was either move to move to England or move to France. And I would, I'd, I'd never want to play for any other club in Wales. I, you know, I say that honestly because it just wouldn't feel right. Um, and when the chance came out to move to Paris and, and play there, it was it all, all fitted perfectly. It's, it's an hour from Cardiff. It's a great club that's you know massive ambition. Um, they've signed some fantastic players. They've you know, got a great squad. Chance to play in the top 14. You know I've released to play for Wales um, for all the internationals. So it, it kind of kind of made the perfect fit, and I'm really glad I've done it. I guess it was slightly different for me. Um, you know, I basically at the time there was a lot of as probably you've already read in there a lot of stuff going on with the, the union right now and the, and the clubs and. Um, at the time, you know, for me, looking back now, it was probably the right decision. You know, I, I back that 100% now. Um, it wasn't an easy one. The year after Lions Tour is always really interesting. Um, certainly in the Six Nations. Uh, after a tour is, is amazing because you get to play against the guys. You make good friends with them on tour and it's always really nice having a beer after and, uh, and catching up. But ultimately, you play any club level, you play international level for 80 minutes. Gotta make sure there's no friends. There's no friends on the pitch. Uh, it's as simple as that. Have you both thought about what you're going to do after you finish playing? And second question for Jamie: Your antics in this room are quite famous. Uh, as you might know, it's getting ripped down in the summer and remade, and they want the new name. Have you got any ideas what we should call Solis next year? Call it JR's Bar. Hell of a name. Um, 
for for Ruby, I studied here for uh, eight years. I did a year in Newark. I intercalated um, the study of medicine here for, for seven years, and uh, I think I'll go into that after finishing. You never, as you said, it's rugby kind of got to treat every game like your last because you're in touch with pick up serious injuries. Um, but we've all, both of us have got friends in the game who've had their careers cut short, and even at EM age, in the mid twenties. Do they, they do their knee, knee real bad or that can kill them? Uh, they don't get to play the game again, so we kind of have to have an eye on the future. I think George is a bit young. How old are you? 21. 21. Scary. Uh, 21. Uh, you should be a, You should be naked on stage. Yeah. <laughs> you should be loving Wednesday nights, do you? Yeah. Woo. I was. I thought long and hard about this, honestly. <laughs> I want to make an app or something, I think. <laughs> it's really like, easy, and then you can just like just chill, I think. Yeah, I can't, I can't imagine, I'm like, I don't know, I'd like to, I don't know, go into like, maybe like open a typical, like, rugby player thing, like open a gym, like start an S&C sort of thing, but, yeah, no, plan A would be into events and cool, and then it would just like continue on then forever, probably. This guy has been a coach at the highest level for, you know, 20, 25 plus years, and you look at his experience, he's been through before, you kind of you know worry what the coaches are thinking and so forth, but ultimately you have to place your faith in the, in the coaching staff because they've been there decades uh, coaching at that level. You know, they've lost many big games, they've won many big games, and, and you just have to kind of feed off feed off that experience and, and have faith in them. Really. I dropped Jamie. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, yeah, I guess it's kind of one where you have to sort of. And look at yourself and look at the team and you know, obviously you got to trust the coach and the day you know uh, it's kind of what he says goes you know you can always have your opinion and say but it doesn't matter at the end of the day if he says you're playing or you're not playing that's the sole decision and the 15 he puts out on saturday you know i'm sure you're not standing job but for us we just got to make sure that you know if we're right to make sure you are picked and make it right on saturday really that was Jamie Roberts and George North promoting their Lions DVD, which will be out very soon. Next up, we have Mart of the Day, and Toby has been a very busy week of football. Yes, a very important one as well, with um, the pressure mounting on every single Premier League club at the moment, with the end of the season drawing ever closer. Yeah. Um, obviously, David Moyes, Manchester United is under a lot of pressure. Um, Chelsea are now under a lot of pressure after their um, loss at the weekend to Aston Villa. And we've also had the Champions League this week. Um, where Manchester United overturned a 2 0 deficit that many people had discounted them from. So let's take a look at what of the day. Welcome to this week's episode of Mott of the Day, where we have a whole host of Premier League action to bring you. Our first game that we're going to cover is Manchester City versus Hull. Manchester City won 2-0 but had a real game on their hands after company got sent off after bundling over Jelanić after he was through on goal. Silva and Dzeko provided the goals for Manchester City but there was an unsavoury incident between Joe Hart and Boyd after Hull believed that Boyd had dived. Now this has come out in the press this week and it appears that Boyd spat at Hart and Hart also looked to put his face into Boyd similar to Pardew's headbutt incident a few weeks ago. Now for Everton versus Cardiff, which Everton won 2-1 with a 90th minute strike from Coleman. Obviously Cardiff didn't expect to win, but it would have been nice. And Marshall made his four stunning saves to keep them in the game, but unfortunately they didn't count for anything. Currently Cardiff sit 19th in the Premier League and look increasingly doomed. Now for Aston Villa versus Chelsea, which turned out to be a game of sending offs. First off was Willian after receiving a second yellow and then Ramirez soon followed him after a horrific two-footed challenge. And then also Mourinho was sent to the stands after coming onto the pitch and protesting to the referee. As far as the scoreline is concerned, it ended 1-0 after Delft completed an outrageous back heel into the back of Guzan's net. Manchester United versus Liverpool now, and the final scoreline ended Liverpool 3, Manchester United 0, after Gerrard scored two penalties before Suarez added a third. This week has been a tale of 3-0 scorelines for Manchester United after their loss at the weekend, but 3-0 win over Olympiacos during midweek, where they overturned a 2-0 aggregate deficit to continue in the Champions League. 
And finally, our last game is Tottenham versus Arsenal, which was decided by a wonder strike from Thomas Rosicki after 79 seconds after receiving the ball from Alex Oxlade Chamberlain. That's it for this week, and thank you very much for watching Moss of the Day. Next time on Full Time, we'll be covering the biggest event in Cardiff's sporting calendar. It's Varsity, and we shall see you then. Thank you very much for watching. Off game, anything can happen.